Hello and welcome to this episode of Microchips. Here we have an Amstrad 901 that we're going to be modifying today. We're going to be removing the green resistor to make it give out 27 million watts. No, before you even think about flaming, that was a joke. But we are going to be modifying this Amstrad 901. I know it's a little bit beaten up, but here we go. So let's do some checks first, make sure that the, the old girl's on frequency. And it seems to be good enough for now. One, two, one, two, one, two. So everything seems to be on frequency. We've got a nice power output. And I can assure you that the green resistor is still inside this radio. And it will be staying inside. So here's the inside of the radio. This is the better quality board out of the two boards that were available. This one's actually got the silk screen. Looks nice and complete. Only problem is somebody's done something with a power lead on this, which we'll try to correct later. There's been bits of work done here and there, but nothing too bad. So, first things first, out with the PLL chip. You can probably guess where this is going. So the desolder gun makes short work of the removal of the PLL and the desoldering. Apart from some pins that are actually bent over. And there's our PLL extracted from the radio. Now here's one of my mid-band mod ribbons. We're just going to test fit it. And it doesn't fit. Because as you can see the PLL is actually very very close to the channel change. And the metal work on the channel change. And also this resistor as well, it's fouling this resistor. So what we're going to do is remove this and put it on the bottom of the board. This won't cause any trouble. Yeah, that's mounted on the back of the board. That shouldn't cause any problems. Gives us a little bit of extra space to work with at the top. So let's try and test fit it again, and it failed. So what I actually had to do, I know some people are going to cringe at this, but unfortunately we've had to modify the channel change and bend the metal out of the way so the pin header fits and now it does fit a little bit better but there's still something in the way you can see the pins are coming through but just not fully So we need to find out what's causing this, and it seems to be this wire link. So again, we need to move that wire link to the bottom of the board, and there it is. It's replaced it with some insulated wire. And now the pins come through correctly, as they should do, with plenty to solder onto. So let's test this modification. So I've got it loosely hooked up. We've got my signal generator providing a signal. As you can see, the UKFM. 
is working correctly. And if you notice the red LED on the mod board, that is actually the VCO lock. And now we've switched it onto mid band and there is no VCO lock anymore. So this needs to be addressed. So it does lock further up into mid band, but not all the way. And we have a lock on channel 40 mid band, but not at the bottom end. And we have a receive as well. So we'll need to broadband this VCO a little bit. But first we'll try and adjust it, see how far it will go. So what I'm doing here is I'm watching the red LED on the mod board. Turning the channel changer until the lock light goes out and then adjusting the VCO core until it relocks. And we'll see how far we can take that down. A little bit of a slow process. But I just wanted to see how far the VCO would actually go on this. And it's still locking the lower we go. But I think this is going to affect our top end. So we'll flick the board back onto UKFM and as you can see the light's gone out and our VC always having trouble locking. So we need to address this. So looking at the schematic of the VCO of this radio we're going to change C4 which seems to be the correct capacitor and there's C4 located in the wax I think I lowered it down to maybe 15 picofarads so let's watch the lock light see how far it's gone this time so we'll just check in receive again we seem to be receiving good and all the way up to channel 40 we still have a lock Let's try it on mid band. So we've got 26965 dialed in and we have a lock. And we are receiving. Don't worry, I'll try and bring up the front end later on. We don't seem to be doing too bad. At the minus 70 dB we should be getting an S9 out of it, so we're kind of near enough there. Okay, happy with that. And channel 40, 27405 was there. So we have received lock. So it looks like the broadbanding of our VCO was successful. And we're just going to have a little, see if we can bring the front end up a little bit. So we're ejecting a very, very, very low signal in. 
and we're just trying to peak it. I don't seem to be able to peak it very far. So we'll just bring the signal up a little bit. We'll turn the tone off so we can actually hear the carrier. I don't think we can adjust this too far. Seems to be quite okay for now. I know it's a little bit deaf down on channel 1. It's only a tiny bit deaf. But it's not that bad to be honest. It is actually stretching this radio a bit farthest. But it's all in the name of science. So after a bit of patient peaking of the coils, we don't seem to have got it much better than what it started off with. So I'll have to check it across the band. And there we have, we've made channel 40 a little bit deaf on UKFM. So we'll try and get it in the middle of that. Just a little bit of patient going backwards and forwards with it. So the minus 70 dB should be an S9 on the meter. So we will adjust the meter. We'll just bring it down just a little bit. But for now, everything seems to be good. So let's try transmit, see how that's doing. And we seem to have a transmit issue. So this again could be VCO related. Or it could just mean that the the output stage needs bringing up. And after a bit of careful alignment with my scope, using the scope as a as a meter to actually see the RF output, a little bit of adjustment, and we've got it producing a healthy power. So a little bit of backwards and forwards across the bands and we get it leveled out as best as we can. Getting a nice 4 watts across the bands. Now as you can see we are slightly off frequency on mid band. We are a little bit high on this one. And to be honest I think the crystal's getting a little bit worn in this radio. As I was having trouble adjusting it to the UKFM. So what we're going to do is use the PA switch for the modification. So I've examined the PA switch and how it works and I've managed to disassemble and um, 
rewire the PA switch so it no longer operates but we can actually use the switch poles on the front for our midband and UK FM and we're also going to use the PA light to signify midband which is just the other side of the switch now to start off with the frequency compensation we're going to change C16 and bring that down just a little bit which is just on the crystal and we've added a 10 picofarad variable capacitor to my board and we've soldered it onto one side of the crystal there so this will be active on midband and should switch in the extra capacitance to bring midband down onto frequency and now we're going to have a look at this power lead looks a little bit unsightly now I ordered this off eBay for Amstrad and it looked right but as you see as you as you are going to see it's kind of not right but it's the best we can do so I believe there's two types of power plugs on these radios a smaller and a bigger one and of course I've got the smaller one but trying to find these power plugs is very very hard so what we're going to have to do unfortunately is to glue this into place a little bit of hot glue and that should do for that so I managed to find the Amstrad microphone it's a bit tatty just like the radio but anyway that's this modification complete you can see it's not too bad on frequency we've got a nice four watts across all the bands but this modification is unfortunately far from perfect over the days that i've been testing it the vco's drifted slightly and unlocked at the bottom end so i've had to keep going back in and readjusting it hopefully i'll get it to a point where it won't unlock anymore i can only presume to, that's to do with temperature um, changing temperature of the capacitors and i've discovered a tiny bit of noise on one of the channels i think that may be the the wine you get on it but i'd have to investigate that further but i mean functionality it works vco wise it's not it's not really brilliant but it does work um, it is stretching the VCO even with it broadbanded but as for proof of concept it works why would we do this to an Amstrad 901 eh, why not I think I'll stick to um, modifying Cybernet ones because they seem to be a lot more tolerant anyway I hope you enjoyed the video don't forget to like subscribe thank you very much and we'll see you in the next video